Hey Descendants, welcome to another video. Today it is time for a tier list and not just a tier list, it is season one updated tier list for the for all the Descendants that are out here. Now, this is an overall tier list. My personal opinion, how do I would position them? If you have a different opinion, that's completely fine. You can leave it in the comments below if I positioned your favorite Descendant in the wrong place and you can tell me why do you think so. But in general, this is, like I said, my overall quick view overview of the descendants this is not a tier list that is going to be specifically for mobbing or specifically for bossing if you do like this video if this video gets a lot of attention and interest from people to see you know these tier lists separated then i'm more than happy to make a separate video about this but now let's do a overall overview of the descendants based on my opinion i have been playing this game since it's launched for over 12 hours every single day so i do have a decent you know overview and an opinion about all these descendants with that being said let's get straight to tier list before we get started make sure if you do enjoy this video to hit that thumbs up and maybe like this is also our discord server over 600 members all tfd focused if you're interested in joining us and join our community i'll be more than happy to meet you over there even talk to you in person so let's go and straight talk about the tier list i described this tier list so s plus tier is going to be a tier that is going to be just best in slot for everything some the descendants that can do absolutely everything then we have s tier which is overall a good descendant a tier is above average um still needs a little bit a little bit of love but still already super good B tier is absolutely average. C tier is going to be a little bit below average that would love to be, you know, more buffed. And D tier is completely useless in my opinion right now and would need to actually get a buff. And, and honestly, C and D tier, in my opinion, are two, you know, tiers that would need a buff regardless. All right. So with that being said, let's get started with the tier list. I will try to be as quick as possible. I don't want to waste your time. So let's talk about straight. I'm going to drop in a descendant and I'm not going to go into much details. Just a couple words for each descendant and let's go. Enzo. I will put Enzo in a S tier. The reason why I'm putting Enzo in an S tier is because he is actually really good for almost everything in the game. I would love to see him be a little bit better and more versatile in terms of mobbing. Uh, but overall, he's a great uh, descendant. The reason why I'm saying great is because... He has so many things to offer in terms of group play. Let's not forget that this is an online multiplayer game. We're not supposed to play this solo. We're supposed to play this with people. So I am more going to be rating the Descendants based off. Is he an overall good Descendants to bring for all activities? Um, and most of the activities in the game right now are with other people. So um, let's talk about Enzo. Enzo is a great Descendant, great for bossing, brings a lot of things to the table when it comes to group play. I would love to see him a little bit more, you know, versatile in terms of mobbing. But this is where I would put him. Glay. I would actually put Glay in an S plus tier. The reason why I'm putting Glay in an s plus tier is because she can do everything and she can do it very well now she's a good mobber she is a great bossing descendant she um can bring so many things to the table and that's you know also why you will see a uh, tons of glaze in your uh, public games uh, and a lot of people playing her i personally don't like lane i don't like her playstyle. i have fully built her i can do everything with her but i just don't personally like her but in my opinion she is a s plus descendant that's why i'm putting her up there the other descendants oh ho oh, oh, oh. ismo ismo guess what next one please buff uh ismo in my opinion is uh just um pretty useless in this in this stage uh, of the game he doesn't have the numbers he doesn't have the, the the kit in my opinion i don't really understand how his kit is supposed to work in this current environment where we are supposed to be super quick where we are supposed to do a lot of damage uh, take a bunny, take a bobby, take all those top tier, take lay, take all these top tier grinders for most of the activities. He doesn't even get near to those. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm based, I'm putting my, you know, here position based on comparing him to the other descendants. 
he might be interesting for some of you folks but i played around with him i don't i don't understand how can i make him work right now in this current setup he does need a little bit of buffs and maybe a few reworks here and there and maybe he has a great potential to actually become a strong and big um good descendant but in my opinion he is a d tier currently ultimate viesa viesa in my opinion is one of the coolest descendants and why i'm saying this she is actually a descendant that has many potential builds and all of those builds are cool interesting and have a lot of damage and you can you know basically do a lot of things i will however put viesa in an a tier the reason why i'm putting viesa in an a tier is because i think that she just lacks a little bit of damage here and there she she does have the potential to melt bosses don't get me wrong she has the potential to be a very good descendant for mobbing and the cool thing about viesa also like i said she has multiple builds that are actually viable that you can make but there is something missing with viesa i don't know if you feel the same way about viesa let me know in the comments below viesa actually is one of my top three descendants like personal love towards the descendants because i do enjoy her kit but i there's something missing i can't even put her in an s tier i don't know what's wrong with viesa maybe if you feel the same way like i do right now let me know what makes you not put her in a s tier s plus tier but viesa in general just in my opinion is a great descendant but i'm gonna put her for now in an a tier now Haley, Haley, guess what well i'm not gonna put her in a s plus tier the reason why i'm gonna, gonna put her in a s plus tier is because she is a very strong bossing descendant but mobbing wise in my opinion she is lacking just swiftness she's not super quick she's not you know her kid her second ability has a le very long animation uh, in terms of you know her ultimate ability with the sniping right now without the transcendent modules she is just in my opinion a pure boss melter however we might see that completely change once they introduce the transcendent module so she can be maybe a completely different descendant you could build her potentially around her first ability uh more towards mobbing but her entire kit is more based off you know you know snipers and stuff and for mobbings right now snipers are you know not where they probably should be i don't know that's why i'm not putting her in the s plus tier but however she is just great she does a lot of damage she is amazing and she's really cheap to get her up and running in terms of you know investment if we compare her to lepic for example she is really easy to get her going in terms of pulling a lot of damage from bossing let's talk about eugene eugene in my opinion is a b tier the reason why i'm saying b tier is because he is a descendant that is actually pretty convenient to have in your party if you're doing some bossing or du hard dungeons as a group he is actually really convenient because he can rest you in a couple seconds he is super he super cool he can heal you up he's just an overall good support descendant however the reason why i'm putting him here is is i don't see his potential as a solo descendant i don't know if i would ever pick eugene to just roam around do my missions do my things um and just enjoy him as an overall descendant i will only pick him if i have to be supporting my team if i have to be someone that is going to be on standby and rest people if i want to and need to heal people so he's a purely support descendant so that's why i'm putting him somewhere in the middle he is needed he is appreciated we love everyone everyone loves when you have a eugene in the team so it's just great ultimate lepic Ooh, and there we go another s tier i don't put him in an s plus tier i have been and uh, actually i was one of the very first people to pull out the ultimate lepic boss melting guide out there um i have been playing in i had a i had my build ready like almost a month and a half ago already um so he's really strong for bossing but for mobbing he lacks so much he has so much potential to be actually super interesting and super cool for mobbing for but for mobbing in my opinion he is just straight up garbage honestly right now so that's why i'm only putting him in an s tier um the reason why is you can still pick him up you can still build him around his grenades you can still pit him build him about uh, around his ultimate ability but not for bossing you can do have a little bit of you know um, options to to play around and and have different builds 
but he's not there yet. He's not the, that ultimate kit that is um, like, for example, Glay or other descendants we're going to be talking about. The next descendant is one of my favorite ones as well. And she, and in fact, I will put her, I'll, I'll, I'm very wiggling between S and S plus. But the reason why I'm going to put her in an S plus tier is because Bobby can do everything. Bobby is a great mobbing descendant, a great grinding descendant in general for, you know, everything, whether it is experience, gold, Kuiper, she can do everything outposts, you know, she even have has her dedicated, you know, term of the Bobby run. Um, when a reactor comes out, I, are you going to be Bobby running this outpost to get reactors or stuff like that? She's just great. The only thing that I don't like her in terms of bossing is that her own, her whole bossing kit is uh, based on her supply moisture. So basically, you not only have to build her, but you also have to bring in a built weapon in order to make her good for bossing. However, when you do, she is just melting bosses and she does a lot of damage as well. Mr. Kyle. Kyle joins his brother. Uh, I don't know if they're brothers, but they do look, you know, alike a little bit. Um, he 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 was very he he had his moment of uh, shine, if I can say so, preseason where he had his Superman build going up and one shotting bosses for 200 million damage and stuff. No, uh, right now he is not that person anymore. He is retired. He has been um, in the very you know far right side of my descendant list when you open up the, the descendant menu he is basically in my opinion currently pretty useless he is supposed to be kind of a semi tank thing like more of a you know also semi support approach but he's nowhere near ajax for example if you have to compare these two in terms of supporting capabilities so i he still these two need in my opinion some love they need to do do better uh and overall have like a better you know hit around them that's what i would say about these two folks Freyna. Freyna, one of my favorite descendants in terms of uh, capability, in terms, in, in terms of, uh, not capabilities, sorry, in terms of her kit. I do think she has great potential to be a great descendant. However, for the time being, I would put Freyna in a C tier, unfortunately. I would see, I would love to see Freyna over here on an A or S tier. Hopefully with, uh, hopefully with Ultimate Freyna, this is going to change entirely. Uh, and most likely it will because they're releasing an Ultimate Descendant and then usually those are you know op and and stuff really depends on what kind of transcendent modules they're going to introduce with freyna maybe they will rework her buff her currently what i don't like about freyna is she has the potential to do a lot of damage she she might has the potential to do good for mobbing good for bossing but she does just doesn't have that the numbers maybe i don't know uh also the approach that you the, the approaches that you need to take to build her strong in terms of making her melt bosses kind of boring and stupid that you need to revamp your weapons you need to expand magazines you need to work around your weapons and stuff like this i don't like this approach however what i do like about freyna is that she's a dot descendant based you know toxic poison and stuff i do love uh you know things like this in games where you can technically dot the boss or dot anything and this will slowly but steady kill and melt stuff uh her contagion mobbing build is actually pretty interesting now they increased with season one they increased the aoe but again i think it's lacking damage uh fallen hope which is a best in slot will have and needs a little bit of love as well so she relies a little bit on the weapons and stuff that you're using that's why she is currently a c tier in my opinion however i do love her i i, lo I would i would love to see her up here uh and the moment they buff her i'm gonna be super happy because i'm gonna be playing a lot let's talk about luna i'll actually put luna next to eugene the reason why i'm putting luna next to eugene is because she is a great descendant to have in your party but in my opinion a bad descendant to play <laughs> the reason why i'm saying this and folks from my community will know i i actually don't enjoy playing luna because uh and when they actually want to tease me and they they actually want me to suffer on my live streams on twitch they actually redeem um you know points for me to play luna and see me struggle the reason why i'm saying this is because her kit is in street extremely unconvenient for folks that cannot multitask in game so you need to play guitar hero and you need to play um you know the game itself in order to be efficient with her uh, it is a little bit of multitask I do uh, struggle getting used to that. That's why I'm not playing her. However, her skills, her kit, everything is super useful and appreciated when you have her in your team. She is strong. She also has a DPS build that kind of okay, kind of reminds you of a bunny, but it's not a bunny. Um, and the other annoying thing about her is her music. You already, we already got all sick and tired about her playing the same tunes over and over again. Next time, please add some songs for people to get for Luna. 
Thank you. Let's talk about Mrs. Bunny. Mrs. Bunny over here is S plus tier. Who would have thought? She is super strong, super quick, can melt bosses, can melt bobs. She is really convenient. In fact, I would say that this should be the first descendant that you should completely max out and build so that you can clear 99% of the content with one descendant. She has everything, right? She has it all. We don't have to talk about much about Bunny. Yeah. That's where she is. Um, Blair. Let's talk about Blair for a second. Now, he got buffed and reworked a little bit with Season 1 right now. I do like, actually, Blair as a descendant. I do like his kit. I do find him pretty interesting. He's not just there yet in terms of numbers. He doesn't have that melting potential like an S tier, an S plus tier. Uh, that's why I would actually put Blair on an A tier right now. It Blair, you know, has the potential to be a dot-based descendant, basically with, with his fire, right, and ignite and stuff like this. He also has potential to build uh, around, you know, big nukes and his ultimate ability. So he's actually a pretty interesting descendant. That's why I'm putting him next to Viesa, because those two descendants are actually descendants that have full potential uh, and multiple uh, viable builds that you can play around. So if you're looking just at overall good descendants that can do everything and still be decent those two descendants in my opinion are actually pretty interesting uh, and good options let's talk about ajax ajax is also one of the descendants that i actually really really enjoy and people are obsessed with my ajax i have the best looking ajax in town uh, if you've never seen the red power ranger and heard about it uh, just join and tune in on my twitch live streams and you'll see my ultimate ajax he is amazing however he is not a s or s plus tier descendant i'll actually even put him as well in an a tier here. The reason why I'm saying that is um, he is convenient to have around, um, you know, boss fights. Uh, he has this support approach. He's super tanky. He, you can build him like almost immortal. Um, um, you can do that. I do like his mobbing uh, build where you jump around like King Kong or, or, you know, yeah, hoax smash, you know, the drill. The thing is, like, he's just still not, he's still not there yet. It's not a perfected descendant like Bunny or Glee or Bobby and stuff like this. That's why I'm putting him just an a tier he i don't honestly i would even have him somewhere here between a and s if i had a tier between those two oh and then let's talk about uh, the last two interesting descendants over here jaber and sharon well jaber just got buffed so well i would actually put him here to get a little bit more buffs but let's actually not leave uh freyna by herself in c tier uh jaber in my opinion also a very interesting descendant i love characters in games that are based around turrets and stuff like this however his specific kit and the, the the potential that he has over there is only good for one thing and that's for semi afk grinding which kind of gets boring yeah you can go in kuiper mine and grind afk with him and semi afk grind for reactors and stuff like this but there is just not much um utilization of his kit right there is just you place a couple turrets down boom boom the turrets and they do damage yes but it's kind of boring uh unfortunately i i don't I never thought that he has actually any good uh, bossing capabilities. Uh, so far, none have been discovered. Maybe there's a, you know, hidden gem behind Jaber's kid that no one has figured out yet. But for this time being, in my opinion, he still needs some love. Maybe a couple more uh, transcendent modules will make him a little bit more interesting. Or an ultimate version might be also pretty interesting. The same stands for Sharon, actually. But Sharon, I would actually put in a B tier. B tier because she is is useful for outposts obviously she has her own approach for the outpost everyone knows sharon um and she's also he, she has an interesting kit compared to uh jaber jaber is just a turret right now right just a turret and based around the turret but sharon you can build multiple ways you can build her into an invisibles you can build her around her ult you can build her multiple ways you can also have boss melting um you know builds for for sharon so she's just average in my opinion right now she's not super great but not super bad as well so this is how i would actually position my tier list for season one let me know what you think in the comments below this is an overall my opinion about the descendants do you agree or disagree um and would you like to see me doing a tier list separately for mobbing and for bossing if you do i appreciate you and i'll try to do that for you if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel that would really mean a lot to me good luck with your jobs i'll see you around